Watawayu, Gubla, and a warm half a day from the Festival Village in Hagatnya Guam, home to the 12th Festival of Pacific Arts. We may be in the last week of the festival, but there is so much to offer still, thanks to the 24 disciplines the festival has to offer this year. First, let's take a trip to the University of Guam to check out the Visual Arts Exhibition. Hey, glad you could join us for our coverage of the 12th Pacific Festival of Arts here in beautiful, hot uh, Guam. Fantastic conditions that we're currently experiencing. And I know last week we brought you a lot of the uh, performances as well as the uh, traditional demonstration and exhibitions. But this week we've decided to take you to the visual arts. And that's at the uh, Center for Arts, the Isla Center for Arts, that's within the vicinity of the University of Guam. And this is where they're having the uh, sh showcase or the exhibition rather, for the uh, sculpture, pottery as well as architecture. And we were fortunate enough as we made our way here this afternoon, we found the New Zealand contingent here. And uh, I'm glad to tell you that I'm joined by the head of the delegation here at the Isla Arts uh, Centre, of course, Bay Riddell uh, from New Zealand. Kia ora, how's it going? Kia ora, it's going very well, thank you very much. Yes, uh, we've been uh, very blessed and, and uh, to be able to exhibit here. We've been treated so wonderfully by the local people. Yeah, it's been, it's been going very well. So we uh, represent the, uh, the clay group that we have is called Kaihanga Uku, uh, which is Māori clay artists basically. We've been a group that has been together, it was formed in 1987. So next year we celebrate our 30th anniversary. Uh, but we have, a, we have a few of our members here exhibiting, uh, most of the younger ones. Uh, uh, I'm one of the older <laughs> ones. <laughs> um, but we, we, we have just have a, a, you know, a cross-section of representation. And the works range from, from pottery pieces to more sculptural pieces, as you can see behind you. Yeah. I understand that a lot of your work as well is uh, exhibited here. Would you be so kind enough just to take us through a tour of particularly the pieces that you have on Showcase here? Yeah. Okay, so um, right behind me are a few of my pieces. I generally work in, in big sculptural pieces, but obviously the, the logistics of bringing pieces like that to, to Guam are uh, quite daunting. So these are some smaller pieces representing Manaya, we call them, um, or sculptural pieces. Uh, behind me here we have some pieces uh, by Pyro Cornell and Dorothy Whiteford. As you can see, them again, more sculptural pieces. Dorothy Whiteford over there. Um, I can't comment on what they're about because those are the, uh, the, the corded or the talk is with the, each individual artist. Kaihonga Uku, when we set up in 1987, we set up on three basic foundational principles. First of all, that we would interpret clay from a Māori perspective. Right? And so how each artist addresses that is really up to them. And uh, secondly, that we would share whatever resources and knowledge that we had with one another. Because we have a saying in Māori, which means with your food basket and my food basket we will sustain the people so it's all about sharing sharing what each one has and of course uh, the third strand to that to that plat was that we would uh, seek to connect with other indigenous cultures particularly those with uh, ceramic traditions that in the past we have had connections with Fijian potters. You know, just going back to your sculptured pieces that you have on showcase here, tell us a bit about uh, the meaning behind it and the cultural significance, particularly in the Maori, um, with the Maori people. Well, our stories with clay uh, range right back to, to creation, that uh, we were created from the clay from a pool called Kurawaka. And so, so uh, in the first uh, earth formed uh, maiden was called Hinyahu, and so the stories go right back. Well, the symbologies that are, that, are, that are placed on the pieces, first of all, for us as Māori, they need to be appropriate to the piece. There are some, some symbols that are for more common use and some that are for more sacred use. So we would not put uh, certain symbols on certain uh, vessels for common use. So those sorts of uh, uh, 
yeah, considerations we 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 uh, respect and and, and uh, invest in our work. Here we have some pieces by Rhonda Halliday. Who her technique is uh, she makes the piece and then burnishes it with a with a smooth stone to get the sort of uh, right shine on there, and then it's smoke fired to get the smoky effects on a clay. And again, one of Rhonda's pieces. Some more pieces over here um, by some of our younger ones. Stevie Hokamo up there. Uh, there's a good shape based on traditional good carving. Yeah. And this piece over here is by Carla Ruka. Uh, more contemporary approach. Uh, this is one of her, uh, what she calls her angel series. Yes. I was interested to also know, uh, Bay, how long have you been um, in, in sculpture? I started in 1974, so 43 years. As far as we know, there wasn't a, there wasn't a ceramic tradition within Māori. Um, and the main influences in New Zealand uh, ceramics were from Japan and from Europe. People like Michael Kaji, Bernard Leach, Shoji Hamada, Kawa Kenzan. And so they were the main influences in New Zealand uh, pottery as such. Welcome back, and thank you for joining us for our highlights of the 12th Festival of Pacific Arts. Papua New Guinea, also affectionately known as PNG, is an island rich in diversity, evident in the more than 800 languages that exist in the island nation. Though they arrived a little bit late, PNG has fully immersed themselves in everything the festival has to offer. We caught up with PNG, the host of the third festival of Pacific Arts. Good blood day everyone. When you take a stroll around the main festival village here in uh, Hagatnia, one thing that's uh, sure to catch your eye are the amazing uh, bilums, uh, some of which are displayed here behind me. So we thought we'd stop at the PNG hut and find out a little bit more about how these bilums are made and PNG or Papua New Guinea's participation here at the festival. I'm here with Michael Mangu and Michael, how are you doing today? Hello, um, I'm just happy to be here at this festival and um, it's our first time to be here, but we really appreciate, we, we just like the way it is organized here and uh, although we arrived late, uh, but we managed to get through. Uh, there are about 53 members all together from uh, Papua New Guinea. Here at the festival, uh, there are basically two kinds of uh, activities that we are participating. One is uh, the two groups are performing at a, at a, at a show, the main, main, main showground, while the other activity is to display the hearts and the craft. And one of the, yeah, the, the main areas that we are all the time that you will see us is here at this stall. PNG always has uh, very interesting performances, very intricate uh, handicraft. Um, tell us a bit about uh, Papua New Guinea. Thank you. Uh, in Papua New Guinea, uh, as you can see, uh, the craft here, what we have, and uh, they come from different regions, right? Like in, in the country, we have almost um, 800 different tribes, different languages. Uh, it's a, it's a multicultural country, Papua New Guinea. And as you can see, the, the, the products that we have, they're all hand woven, they're from different regions. Like the baskets here we have from the highlands, highlands of Papua New Guinea. And you can see the baskets made from the cotton, they're from the, from the highlands. And when you see the others, the other billums, they're, they're from the coastal. So how can you tell the difference between the different uh, regions? Uh, is it in the colors and the patterns that they use or in the way that they weave? Yeah. In the highlands, they weave more, more on the cotton. Cotton and uh, some of the, the trays, the vegetable trays, the fruit trays they have, they have their own way of, ways of doing it. While on the coastal, we have um, our own ways of doing it. But uh, the materials are almost the same. We use bark from the trees and uh, cane, and the special um, vines from the, from the forest. And, and what is the, the process uh, involved uh, in making these trays? The process involved in making these trays, um, it takes uh, quite a long time to, to come up with a tray like this. Uh, usually, a person who is making this one has to go to the forest and then do a selective um, cutting of these canes. 
and then they are taken out. They are cleaned up. Uh, the leaves are taken off, and uh, they are put in the water to do a, a total wash with the warm water. I would say with the warm water, and then the the top part of it is has to be cleaned, and then the strips are taken out. They use small knives and tools to take the strips. Fine, they have to take it out properly, do it properly because it's going to go around the other the other uh, cane. And then once that is ready, they usually put on the sun, dry it properly, and then once it is dried, they are tested. It's okay for them to do the weaving. Once it's ready, they, they start weaving. It takes about two weeks to, to come up with a tray like this. Are there any special dyes or anything that are used? For the trays like this, uh, they don't use um, dyes. There's, there's no other artificial. They're all natural. The different colors, this, these colors, as you can see, comes out from the, from the original cane. Yeah. So there, there's no colors on these trays. Like you see from the balloons, some of the balloons we have, they're, they're, they're not uh, painted. They're from different cotton. While the other balloons that we have, they, they, they get the paint, or the dye, or the color from the, from the tree. The sap from the tree and the clay. They're mixed together to come up with different colors to put on the balloons. The trays are usually whipped by men. Uh, they use hand tools, and uh, they are usually used by, I mean, whipped by the men. Men does that. What about uh, the colorful billums that we see behind us? Uh, tell us about the process that's involved in making them. As you can see, this most of the billums are made by women. They have different patterns, right? Like the other one that we have is more traditional. Uh, the one that very special for, especially for. Uh, women for marriage, when the woman is uh, getting ready for marriage, this, this is the balloon that was used in the past. But it doesn't have any other artificial colors on it. It's a natural colors from the uh, way, way it is woven. And it is used especially for the uh, bride prize ceremonies. What do you think of the festival of uh, Pacific arts and bringing all the Pacific Island countries and territories together to share our different cultures? Yeah. Uh, like for us coming here, we, we find it it's really interesting. Like we have to say what Papua New Guinea has to our Pacific uh, brothers, uh, island countries. Like some of the cultures are probably the way we see it, they're sort of they're westernized, they're dying away. So, but Papua New Guinea, I believe we, we still preserve. Now we'd like to share some of what we have. Probably it's dying out in some of the uh, countries in the Pacific. They have to revive. So that's why we are here. We have to tell them now we have to you know bring back our culture back.